the day I'll rise up In spite of the age I will rise a thousand times again And we'll rise up I like the waves We'll rise up In spite of the ache We'll rise up And we'll do it a thousand times again You 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 us down But now it looks like things are finally coming around I know we've got a long, long way to go And where we'll end up I don't know But we won't let nothing hold us back We're putting our show together We're polishing up our act And if you've ever been held down before I know you refuse to be held down
you're trying to make it, they only push you aside. They really don't have no way. Made a lot of progress. And a lot of us in this room voted for Hillary Clinton, and we thought that the baton would pass, and we'd continue to build on a lot of things that President Obama did. And all of a sudden, this guy named Donald Trump wins and shocks not only Democrats, Republicans didn't even celebrate at first. They were shocked. Like, did, it, did we just win? Like, they were just as shocked as we are. And now what's the challenge for us? Are we going to lick our wounds for four years? Are we going to get up, keep doing what we're doing, fight the good fight, try to figure out how to work across the That's going to be our challenge going forward. It's not going to be easy. You know, we got to admit that we as Democrats don't have all the answers. And sometimes the most unlikely places. Right now, with you in this space celebrating this extraordinary milestone of 100 years of the NAACP, the NAACP came together in a moment of crisis. And a lot of people thought that the organization formed because we wanted to deal with education, we wanted to deal with housing, we wanted to deal with voting, but actually what the NAACP formed around was to deal with the threat of lynching, the threat of violence, the threat of insecurity. And it was people just like me and you, and I just want us to reflect for, the, for a moment, that our four parents had to deal with some very serious problems. And they came together and they actually committed themselves, even though it wasn't convenient, to challenge those problems. And tonight, we've got to deal with some very serious problems. Uh, we are in a moment of crisis in this country, and we have to create some change. And I want to talk about that if I can, because I believe the people in this room, all of us, have the capacity to create change, not only in Sacramento, not only in California, but in this country, and we need change. We needed it for a long time. I've been working in the criminal justice context, and I'll tell you that, that I've seen some horrific things. In 1972, we had 300,000 people in jails or prisons. Today, we have 2.3 million people in jails or prisons. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. We have become the most punitive society on earth. Mm. We've got 6 million people on probation or parole. There are 70 million Americans with criminal arrests which means that when they try to get a job or try to get a loan, they're often disfavored. We've done terrible things to women in this country. In the last 20 years, the percentage of women going to prison has in actually increased 646%. Each and every one of you, don't ever think that your grades are a measure of your capacity to change the world. Right. 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 Got people in this community doing really well, and I want you to all do well. I want you to be able to take care of your families and your friends. But I also want to say to you, don't ever think your income is a measure of your capacity to change the world, because it's not. I'll end with this. I, I learned something about changing the world. This older man, I was giving a talk in a church. He came into the back of the church. He was an older black man in a wheelchair. And he was staring at me the whole time I was giving this talk with this stern, almost angry look on his face. I couldn't figure out why is he looking at me so angrily. And I got through my talk, people came up, they were very nice and appropriate, but that older black man kept sitting in the back just staring at me. And when everybody else left, he got some young kid to wheel him to the front of the church, and he came to the front of the church uh, with this stern, angry look on his face coming down that aisle. And when he got in front of me, he put his hand up, he said, do you know what you're doing? And I just stood there. He said, do you know what you're doing? And I stepped back and I mumbled something. And then he said one last time, he said, do you know what you're doing? Then he looked at me, he said, I'm going to tell you what you're doing. And that older black man looked at me, he said, you're beating the drum for justice, you keep beating the drum for justice. And I was so moved. I was also really relieved, because I just didn't know what was about that. <laughs> then this man grabbed me by my jacket and he pulled me into his wheelchair, he said, come here, come here, come here, I'm going to show you something. And this older man turned, he said, he said, you see the scar I have behind my right ear? He says, I got that scar in Green County, Alabama, 1963, trying to register people to vote. He turned and said, he said, you see this cut I have down here at the bottom of my neck? So I got that cut in Philadelphia, Mississippi, 1964, trying to register people to vote. He turned his head, he said, you see this dark spot? He said, that's my bruise, got my bruise in Birmingham, Alabama, 1965, trying to register people to vote. He said, I'm going to tell you something, young man. He said, people look at me. They think I'm some old man sitting in a wheelchair covered with cuts and bruises and scars. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. 
He said, these aren't my cuts. He said, these aren't my bruises. These aren't my scars. He said, these are my medals of honor. And I believe in this place, standing on the shoulders of people of color who were bruised and scarred and battered to create this moment for us to keep fighting, we have no choice but to get proud. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day I rise up. Low level drug crime. We have a bill that uh, we're particularly interested in because most of you have been profiled in stores and restaurants and don't even recognize. But we're tired of being trapped when we go in a store. And we, we go to the better stores and we see people suddenly, wherever we go, we see that person. That's called racial profile. Yes, they target our community. They say it's the best because that's where the crime is. Crime is everywhere. If you go looking for it, you're going to find it. Go look in the suburbs, you'll find crime up there. When they track your kid and put them in a, in a special ed program, whether they need it or not, that's racial